Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be working on my dwarf Schefflera. It's been growing for the entire summer and now it's time to prune it back. I'm always sad to see the summer end. The trees just start to grow really well. You can see this new shoot coming out the top here. Really vigorous. Yeah, it seems like the trees just start getting going and then summer ends and uh, time to bring them back inside again. So we've still got, I'm hoping another month where I can leave the trees outdoors for the, you know, the rest of September. But I'm going to prune this back now because the nights are getting cool, growth is slowing down, and I want to prune this, leaf prune it today, prune the structure back, and then get a bit of recovery time before it comes indoors. Underneath this giant tropical canopy, you can see the actual structure of the tree below, a clump style, lots of aerial roots. So the tree itself isn't that large. It's mostly made up of a mass of foliage in the canopy. So I'll be taking it back quite, quite far today. My first step for today will be to remove all the leaves off the tree and that way I can see the actual branch structure below and make good pruning decisions. I last defoliated this tree two years ago. I didn't do it last year. So it's always exciting to defoliate it and see the structure again and prune it back to size. It's uh, the structure's coming along really nicely in this tree. So here I go, I'll just uh, begin the defoliation. It'll probably take a while. There's a lot of leaves on this tree. The only reason I'm not letting it grow right to the time I bring it indoors is that I'm really busy with the plant room getting it fixed up. Uh, so I don't think I'll have much time when it comes, you know, fall, when it's time to bring the trees in. I've just got to get them inside and I've got to get that plant room done so so if I do this in advance you know as I said they'll get a little time to recover before I bring them in probably you know grow a new set of leaves that should help it out over the winter there's always a balance you know between the ideal time to do things on with bonsai and when you get time to do things so it's the two don't always line up sometimes you have the time to do something but it's not the right time to do it on the tree and other times it's the perfect time to do an operation to the tree but you don't have the time so you kind of gotta balance the two sometimes like i'm doing today i have a playlist for this tree or this group of trees and you can go back you know seven years ago and see how the tree looked then you can watch all the steps i've done to the tree almost everything i do to my bonsai i do on video so you can follow all the steps i've done to the trees go back and see what they look like what i did to get them to the state they're in so it's kind of interesting i uh i like to go back myself and uh see what the tree looked like and what I did and what was successful and maybe what wasn't so yeah check out the playlist tab on the channel and you'll see a playlist for almost every tree I have and you can follow along and see the progress of the trees over the years and you know my goal is eventually maybe 20 years from now you'll be able to you know go back 20 years with these trees and see what they look like and how they developed check the progress it'll be quite interesting and I can see you know maybe after 10 years I'll make some montages of the progress of the trees over the first 10 years of the channel and uh, I think that'll be quite interesting too kind of 10 years condensed into a small video I would recommend defoliating your tree every second year instead of every year. It gives them a little time to rest and gain strength. If you're always defoliating them every year, it might weaken the tree. 
especially in this climate. If you lived in a tropical climate, you could probably defoliate this uh, two or three times a summer. But here in Canada, growing's a little different. You have to be a little more careful. So I, uh, I tend to defoliate every second year because it is it takes a lot of energy for the tree to grow new foliage. And you don't do this operation if your tree is weak. This is only for healthy, vigorous trees. It's starting to look a lot smaller once again. These leaves are really vigorous. You can see, um, you know, some of the leaves have a giant stalk on them. And that's because it's really gaining strength. When the leaves first come out, they're small and tiny. And then as the branch gains strength, the leaves get larger and larger. So the best time to display these chiffleras is after defoliation, just as the new growth is growing in, they look super miniature and the tree looks fantastic. And that's the best time to show them. The rest of the year, they kind of just look like a big tropical bush. But, you know, as this tree matures, it'll change. It'll, uh, the leaves will get smaller as I get more branching. And I think as the canopy gets a little higher, you'll see more of the trunk structure in that. I think it'll be a nice tree in the future. As I'm pruning the leaves off, I'm checking for insects. I haven't seen any yet, but I'm looking. In case you notice scale insects or aphids or white fly or anything, it's a good time to inspect your tree because you'll be looking at every branch. It certainly had a dense canopy on this tree. It's a lot of leaves to remove. And after today's pruning, it should develop even more ramification, more branching, which should be good. When you're growing a tree, you're creating pathways or canals between the roots and the branches. So you're creating that flowing pathway for fluids to flow. And uh, yeah, so you're always trying to balance that system so it grows equally. So one branch isn't getting all the vigor compared to the rest of the tree. It's all about the flow. You can see with the vigorous growth, it's stimulated the formation of aerial roots there, coming off the branches. And there's some down below in the root base down there. Right here, there's some. Not a whole lot this year, but uh, We'll keep working on it, getting more aerial roots to form. I think it'll make this tree look really good. I'm about halfway done now. Really nice seeing the structure in here. Yeah, it looks like it's been doing well, this tree. Defoliation is progressing really well. However, it started to rain, so I'll have to take cover for a while. Both me and the camera are underneath this little cover so I can continue with the defoliation and not get too wet, I hope. I'm not too concerned about getting wet. It's mainly the camera I don't want to get wet. And it, it's a fairly warm day today. It's, uh, you know, t-shirt weather, which is good. I think this rain is the effects of Hurricane Laura. Not to be confused with my wife, Laura. But Hurricane Laura, I think it's, uh, these are the after effects. I got that warm, tro humid, tropical air blowing up here. Well, if anything, the rain is getting harder. <laughs> it's not letting up yet. I may have to go to London today to pick up the drive shaft for the truck too. That's getting rebuilt. So hopefully that'll cure a nasty vibration problem I have with the truck at certain speeds. There's always something to do on these old vehicles. Things do wear out over time. But once you get them all sorted out, they tend to run pretty reliably once again. Well, defoliation is going well. I am getting close to the end. Sure is nice to be able to see all the structure in here once again. 
Okay, I think that is the last leaf I took off. It is defoliated. When you see all the leaves taken off like this, you have to imagine the amount of energy it took to generate all this matter. And it's a lot. So you have to respect the health of your plant that, you know, a defoliation process like this zaps a lot of energy away from the tree. So right now, the tree without any leaves is living on stored energy in the trunk and branches and roots. I've got the tree defoliated now, so the next step will be to come in and prune the branches. You can see in this tree, there's a lot of movement in these branches that, you know, there's no straight sections. And it's a common problem that I see in a lot of Schifflera bonsai, is that the branches are allowed to grow really long and they kind of get that you know, that umbrella-shaped canopy, but the structure below has been grown rapidly and you get all those straight shoots that are straight and long without any taper, change of direction, ramification. They're just kind of branches that stick out from the trunks to form the canopy. So that's what I'm trying to avoid with this tree. I'm trying to build the outer structure slowly so it has lots of movement, subdividing, and change of taper in the trunk and branch structure. You can see in this overall view of the tree, the older branches and trunks are the brown color, the bark color, and the new shoots are the green color. So you can kind of see what grew within the last year and a half, maybe two years. And that gives you a good idea. You can see the initial profile of the tree where it had that kind of umbrella shaped canopy and all these shoots, the new shoots sticking out. So I think my first step, I'll prune back all those new shoots that are jutting out of the canopy profile and get them kind of back under control. I'll be looking at the tree from the front view, so I've moved the camera off to the side here. And here I go with the pruning now. So this one, I'm looking for outward facing leaves. There's a dormant bud at the base of each leaf petiole and a new branch will come in the direction the leaf was facing. So. For this one, I'm going to go back to here, like that. This one back to here. This one back to here. Actually, yeah. Here. Here. And this is just a rough initial pruning, just to get all those long ones trimmed back. I've got the rough initial pruning done. You can see it's kind of restored more to a umbrella shaped canopy but it's just the start there's a lot of branches in here like look at this one it goes from down here all the way up here with no branching no taper and yeah it's just kind of a boring branch so that will have to be shortened and there's a lot of branches like that here's one spot here i've got three branches growing from one point so I've got to remove one and it'll probably be that one. Um, I've got a branch here that comes up and it grows towards the inside of the tree. So that'll have to be pruned off and hopefully a new branch will grow that's fanning out more. There's a lot of branches here that are, there's one growing over top of another branch. It's just kind of crossing across a whole bunch of branches. So that'll have to be shortened. There's a branch going straight up here. That'll have to be pruned back shorter. Another one here. So not only, you know, your, your tree has a profile from the front, but you've also got to look at the profile from the top. So you want that kind of oval shape. You don't want, you know, one part of the tree jutting out and you know, having a funny shape from the top. Because most trees in nature, they grow fairly evenly. You don't get, you know, bizarre looking canopies. They're generally fairly uniform. So yeah, there's a lot of branches crisscrossing here. There's a lot of branches that don't flow nice. If you look at this branch way down here, the branch flows out the trunk, and then I've got a branch coming off 90 degrees here and then it kind of comes out so that's kind of awkward looking 
So slowly over the years, you know, you want to prune away those awkward looking branches and replace them with ones that flow better. And uh, that way you end up with a really beautiful flowing tree in the end. If you have it all kind of kinked and angular, you know, it's a different look. It's, uh, if you want that look in a tree, it, it's fine. If you grow it all angular and coarse looking. Um, but for a tropical or a deciduous tree, I think the flowing look suits the style of the tree better. I don't think they grow in nature with all these right angles and sharp corners. I think they're more flowing. So an angular tree would probably be more suited towards pines and things like that. It's still raining out. I've got the camera undercover here. I'm going to go above the tree and look straight down on it and prune off, kind of do a profile prune looking down from above to get that oval shape to the tree. So that'll be my first step. Here's a view looking down at the top of the tree and you can see it's grown a lot longer at the back here than it has at the front. So I'm going to even that out. I'm going to do kind of a profile prune around the edges of the tree looking down. So here I go. So that's got that kind of back edge in check with the front. I still have a little bit to do. I think that'll do for the pruning in this view looking down. Pruning in the top view also affects the front view, so let's have a look at that now. See if that's dramatically changed or not. Yeah, it's looking okay. It's uh, a little rough around the edges. I've got to do a lot of pruning to the profile up here to get it evened out. It's pretty rough looking right now. I think before I do that, I'm going to go in and eliminate all those problem areas. Why have branches growing on top of other branches? Just to kind of uh, correct the basic structure before I get into the detail kind of profile pruning and you know, final branch pruning. So that'll be next, identifying kind of problem areas and going in and fixing them. To decide what branches to prune, I just come in and I take one trunk line at a time and I follow it up and I check out the branch structure, always trying to get nice flowing branches that divide. And I look for the branches that surround them and I try and give each branch its own spot of light. So I just do that. I just go through each trunk line one at a time and prune away to clear out, you know, all those problems like crisscrossing and vertical branches and branches without taper and straight branches and just pruning it away, keeping my good branches and pruning away the ones that aren't as nice. And eventually over the years, you get a pretty good looking branch structure. I'm going to start over here on the right hand side of the tree because there's a lot of congestion over here and a lot of branches that need sorting out. So I'm following, there's a, the trunk line starts down here, it comes up and it divides into two here and they kind of crisscross each other here, but it's not too bad. But there is a branch that grows 90 degrees here and then it comes up between these other two branches. And I, I think that just clutters it up. I, uh, I don't want it too simple, but I, I think if I remove that branch, I still have the one coming out here and then I can start the branching for this somewhere in here. So my first step, I'll get rid of that awkward crossing branch in there. So here I go, like that. These make excellent cuttings too, if you want to grow more chaffleras for free. I've got the new growth, you can see the green here, and it's kind of, you know, doesn't really move a lot, and so that needs pruning back is what I'm saying. So I'll, I'm looking at the leaf scars, I've got some outward facing ones there, so I'm going to prune it back to here and to here. That prunes back that new growth to something quite compact. This one I'm going to go back to here. It's almost interfering with this branch beside it, but not quite. There's a little bit of room there. These ones I'll prune back a little more to here, to here. And 
I've got one coming up vertically here and it doesn't flow very nice. I do have a nice flowing branch down below here. If you can see that. And that is my the nicest flowing branch line. And I do want to keep these outer branches fairly horizontal. So I'm going to remove all this top growth off. So here I go. Like that. I'll develop that branch there. There's a big long straight branch there so I'll remove that back to here it divides into two at the tip there and then it comes up and interferes with the branch beside it again like this branch is kind of flowing nicely out towards this branch and then it's kind of awkward looking this part of it and this part there is a branch kind of forming below so I'm going to remove most of this branch. I'll take it back to here. And I'll see if something better develops in this area. And I'll also shorten this one back to here. I may get something better developing and then I can get an extension of this branch out in this area and it'll be nice and flowing and beautiful looking. So up here I've got this branch comes up and divides into three this one shoots straight vertical, so I'm going to, I think I'll remove that one. I don't know. It's all a bit of a problem, that branch. I'm debating whether I should take this entire branch off back to here to keep it more horizontal. Difficult decision. I'm going to look at it from the front. Well, from the front, it definitely doesn't look good. All the branches flow outwards except for this one going straight up. So I can either prune it off really short or remove it entirely. And I think for now, I'm going to prune it off short and we'll see what happens like that. So that's, you know, fairly major branch coming off. So this part of this branch flows really nicely now. It's got some great, great things happening. Uh, I think I've got this branch kind of grows a bit above this one, so I'm going to shorten it just a bit to there. That'll give each branch tip a bit of light. I'm wondering if I should take that tip off there too. I think I will. Like that. Keep that branch flowing. Now, so this is a major trunk line coming here, and then it divides here. And I've got this aerial root feeding this section. So I've got to get this part of the branch flowing nicely too. So out here I've got a vertical part I'll prune off entirely like that. I've got a branch that's too long here so I'm looking for leaf scars doing directional pruning to there. This one's too long I'll take that one back too. So this one it does have a branch that flows nicely coming out horizontally here and then I've got this vertical section, but it also has some nice branches that fan out. So I'll look in the front view. There's the front view of this branch, and you can see it's a bit of a Chinese dragon. It kind of dances around everywhere. So instead of beautiful, smooth, and flowing. So I think I've got to do some corrective work to it. I think the first thing I'll do is I'll remove this branch going straight upwards here. So right here. Gone. That helps the horizontal flow of that branch. I will shorten this one off to here. This one to here. There's a little spider there. And then I have to decide about this one. If I want to develop this horizontal branch out here, I think I'm going to leave that for now because it's not, not a bad looking branch. It's not, it's not bothering me at this moment, so I'll leave it. Just cleaning up an old pruning stub there. Another one here I can clean up. Yeah, so that's got my first trunk line pruned up, kind of flowing nicely. There's an overhead look at that branch. So it goes from here, right across to here, from the one trunk line in there. So yeah, it flows really nicely now. It's got lots of movement, taper, everything you want in a bonsai branch. There's a look at it from the front now and you can definitely see 
the horizontal nature of that branch, how it kind of flings out. And that's what you want. You want your lowest branches coming out horizontally, these branches coming up here, the middle one's vertical. So everything's fanning out from the uh, clump style planting. You can see over on the left hand side, I don't really have that horizontal direction to these lower branches. There's a lot of shoots sticking up, so I'll have to correct that also. It looks like the sun will be coming out soon. That's great after a nice rain. I'm going to get out my spinning tree bonsai turntable. And I'll get the tree on top of it. That'll make pruning a lot easier. I'll continue pruning. I have this one branch here that's crossing above a lot of other branches and I've got to decide what to do. There's always difficult decisions on these trees. Just pruning back some of these leaf stems a little shorter so I can see what's going on. Yeah, so I got branches crisscrossing here that are touching each other. And I've got to decide what's the important ones I want to keep. They converge. When you're looking at the tree from the front, these two branches converge, so they're not very nice looking. Here's the branch I'm trying to decide what to do with. I've got this branch kind of comes up and then it divides into two here. And this one grows across and starts interfering with this branch. So if I were to prune it off shorter, I might get something growing out in a better direction at the base there. If I take it away totally, I'm sure it'd be fine also, but I'd only have one branch coming from that branch. I'd lose a bit of ramification. If I take that entire branch off, probably wouldn't hurt the tree either. I'll have to decide. Here's the branch here that I'm looking at. It comes up straight up here. So I could prune this upper part off and this upper part, and I'd be left with a nice, more horizontal branch coming out here. And I get a lot of taper because I'm going from quite thick by eliminating these branches. I go thinner and then th even thinner out here. So it'd really simplify that trunk line. Now I got to decide, do I want to do that? I don't know. It's a hard decision. Um, it'll definitely make that branch look better, but I may, may end up with this big hole in the canopy up here, which, you know, usually when you get light on these branches, they get new branches coming out of the old wood anyway, but uh, it would definitely fix itself over the years. So, yeah, I got to make some decisions. I'm going to take off, there's a branch growing back towards the center of the tree here. I'll take that off for starters. I don't want that at all. And then, I don't know about this one, it crisscrosses across this branch here, which doesn't look so good either. And I could either prune it off short and hope something grows out this direction or just take it right off. I'll prune it short for now, like that. And then I'll prune this one back to here for now and we'll see how it's looking. It's nice to make comfortable decisions in bonsai. Ones that you feel, yeah, that's, that's the right decision for sure. Or that's going to look really good in the future. It's these decisions that are kind of borderline where you're not sure what's gonna happen, how it'll look, that are tough to make. Just doing a bit of cleanup here. There's another one growing back in towards the center of the tree here. I'll take that one off. Get rid of that. Everything tells me, you know, I've got this thick branch going to thin here. I got taper, nice direction. Everything tells me I should prune off this upper part. What I don't want is thick branches going all the way up to the edge of the canopy. I want the branches going from thick at the base of the tree and getting finer and finer as they reach towards as they reach the edge of the canopy. So I don't want, you know, these are getting thick and they're kind of up to the top of the profile of the canopy. So if I were to prune that off, I could develop something else coming up there that may look better in the future. So I think I will take it off. All right, here I go. Um, 
I'll come in here with my rusty old pruners and take that branch off right to here. All right, here I go. Just like that. So, a nice cutting again. And the uh, branch flows really nicely now. I've got to decide about the other one. Um, I think I'll take the top of it off for now. Here I go. Like that. See what happens in that area. But I think that's got that branch nice and flowing now. Here's a view of that branch right here. So at least it's kind of flowing outwards from the tree. I do have a big branch that grows in and crosses everything. I think that's going to have to be removed. This one right here. If you can see it, it, it starts way down here. Kind of crisscrosses everything. Yeah, that one's got to be removed. I'm coming in now to remove that branch, which is right in here. So here I go. Just like that. That cleans that area up a lot. That looks much better. I'm going to work on this side of the tree now. There's a lot of branches that are going upwards, whereas this side is more horizontal. And I, I like that horizontal look, like the trees growing out and you know slowly taking up more and more space. So I want to get rid of a lot of these vertical shoots on this side. So it's looking a little more horizontal, but I still have this one branch and it's crisscrossing in front of the branches below. I'll show you that from the top view. So here we are. So this is the branch I'm talking about right here. And you can see everything flows out nicely and then this one crisscrosses over top of the one below it. So I'm going to get rid of that one. All right, here I go, off it comes. Just like that. I got a little cleanup I can do here. So back here I've got one branch coming up and it divides into one, two, three, four branches. So I'll correct that one next. All right, so let's look for the best flowing lines here. This one's on the inside of a curve here, so I'll take that out, that never looks good. I've got a more horizontal branch below and one above, so I'll take the upper one off, like that. And then I'll just clean this area up. And then I've got a branch coming up vertically here, and this one also kind of goes vertical. I'll prune it back a bit. And I think that's all I can do. I maybe should get rid of this vertical one here, like that. So that's got that branch cleaned up a bit better now. So I'll keep spinning the tree around looking for other branches. There's kind of a, a vertical section here that needs to be pruned back. I'll take that one back to here. There's another vertical shoot here. That's kind of crisscrossing with the one below it. I'm going to remove that entirely. Like that. That looks better. Here I've got a branch coming up and then it divides from one into three here. So I've got to decide which one I want to keep. Or which two I want to keep. Um, I think I'll probably get rid of the upright one. Let me just see it from the front. Yeah. So I'll take the one that's growing upwards off, like that. That looks better. And I think I've got to shorten these. They're kind of, if I look from above, they're almost the same length as these branches. So, And they, they run a long length without any movement or taper. And they've, they're getting good light, so I've got to prune them off quite a bit shorter. So I'll go right back to there and here. And maybe this one's even got to come back to here. Like that, yeah. That looks better. This one 
is fine. I've already worked on that one. Um, this area that I've got, there's a branch coming up here that's kind of shooting up vertically and that doesn't look so good. Yeah, that's got to come off. So here I go. Just like that. And then I think I'll reduce this one back to here. Like that. This one back to here. That gets that trunk line in good shape. Following out, that's all good. I'm just doing these lowest branches for now. That's all pretty good. Up front here, I've got this branch kind of crisscrosses over top of these branches. Hmm. Okay, so what I've got to do, I've got to remove the one over here. So I'll do that. Like that. And then up top here, I've got this one branch divides into three. So I'll take off the one on the inside here. Like that. And I'll shorten these ones. Like that. And I'll need to shorten this one. And this one. even further there. That's got that sort of pretty, pretty well. Yeah? Okay, that was the drive shaft people calling me. The drive shaft for my truck is done, so I'm going to head to London now. My next problem was going to be this one. I've uh, pruned this branch off several times because it kind of interferes with the main trunk when viewed from the front view. So let's have a look at it. There's a view of that branch, so you can see it kind of crisscrosses what I would call the main trunk line back here. These two branches kind of frame it so your eye is drawn into the center here. And this kind of crisscrosses everything and I've got to decide if I want to take it right off. I think I've taken it off before. You can see some pruning scars in this area and it just keeps growing back. So I think it's got to come off. It definitely hides your view of the main trunk and not in a good way. Um, I don't mind if it kind of hides the main trunk line back there and you kind of got to maneuver a bit to see it, but it's just, yeah, it doesn't look good going in front. So off it comes. Here we go. Just like that. I think that looks much better being able to see in there too. I'm making good progress on the tree. I've got my lowest branches more horizontal and now I've got to start on the upper structure so it all kind of fits together like a jigsaw puzzle so it all unifies the whole design of the tree and the clump style. So I'm going to London now to pick up the drive shaft for the truck. I'll be gone, uh, it'll probably take me two hours so I'm not sure if I'll be able to continue this today or it might be tomorrow morning but we'll keep going on it. I'm back from London now. The drive shaft was slightly bent. It was 70 thou out of round and it got all new bearings and a new hanger bearing. So they're going to put it back into the truck tomorrow morning. So now I can continue with my dwarf Schifflera. I've got all these outer branches kind of lowered and horizontal. So the next step is to go up to the next kind of level, which is about here and work on getting all those branches more horizontal rather than shooting up vertical. All right, so right off the bat, I can see a, a branch that's going absolutely vertical here. And there's a more horizontal one here. So I'll just snip the tip off there. And I think I'll take this whole top off here. And I'll clean up this part like that. That cleans that branch up. I got another one that kind of comes vertical here. There's a leaf scar coming this direction. So I'll prune it just above there. That should do fine. And on this one, there's one shooting absolutely vertical here. And I'll take that right off. Like that. 
leaves me with two horizontal ones. And there is a, there is kind of three here. Um, I think I better take this one off. This one on the inside here. Like that. That looks good and cleaned up. It is possible to take this one down even further. Um, there's not really any division up here, so I could take it back to there. That keeps it a little lower. From the front view, it, this one kind of crisscrosses, so I, I, I don't even know if I want to keep that. I don't think I do. I think I want to get rid of this entirely, so I will. Like that. That cleans up you know your view it doesn't have a branch crisscrossing the main part of the uh, or the main tree in there I'm going to reduce the shoot here even more there's a leaf scar pointing this direction so I'll take it a little shorter to there yeah that'll be better all right let's keep going around here's another branch coming out front So everything on this branch, it kind of comes out this direction and then all three of these branches kind of go back in towards the tree. Which is a bit of a problem. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but uh, it's getting a little high too. I'm going to do a heart prune here. And hopefully something will come out this direction. I'm going to take this upper one right off, like that. That lowers that branch, gets it on the right track, I think. I could even take this one lower, maybe, I will, to there. That looks much better. Okay, let's keep spinning around here. I've got a branch that's going vertically here. That would look better if it was removed, so I will. I've got a vertical section on here. And if that was in the inside of the tree, you know, you want your branches to be vertical. And then as you get towards the edges, you want them slanted and then more horizontal. So I think definitely this vertical part could be removed. So I'll take that off like that. And then I'll reduce this part back to here, like that. There's another branch here that can be reduced. And I'm going to go quite far back. I'm going to go right back to here, like that. There's a vertical shoot coming off this branch. That can be removed entirely, like that. I'm looking at this branch now. I've got a shoot that goes up here and that can definitely be reduced i think right back to here like that there's a vertical shoot i'll oh, first i'll clean up this prior pruning cut there's a vertical shoot here that can be removed there's a stub from previous prunings i can clean up and there's a leaf scar here so i'll prune just above that to there and that cleans that branch up so now I'm at looking at this branch from the front it looks fairly good I can prune this back to here like that um, I'll reduce this one quite a bit I'm going to I've got two branches here I think I'm going to take off this whole upper portion to there so that cleans that branch up a lot looks a little better in the front view and then behind that I've got this straight section coming up which can be reduced back I'm just looking for leaf scars something that faces outwards right here prune just above that that's looking better now I've got a great big long straight section there and this is kind of crossing over top of this branch I've got a stub back here from previous previous pruning so I'll clean that stub up like that 
And then I got to do something about this branch here. Um, this is kind of my confusing section where these two major branches kind of come together and they'll eventually fuse. So I kind of want that tangled on purpose. So I don't mind if this one kind of weaves its way through here. I think I'll just reduce the height of this section to here like that. I don't want everything on this tree to look totally orderly. I want, you know, these branches to kind of weave through each other in places. I want the general structure to be there, but I don't want it perfected to the point where it looks artificial. So I kind of don't mind that branch weaving through there. Okay, let's keep going around. I've got I produced this one before. It's a long one coming out the back and I'm wondering, I think it's still too high. So, I'm looking for leaf scarves. I can prune it back to here. And I wonder if I should go shorter. Maybe I will, right to here. Like that. Yeah, that's better. So I've got a few more of these sort of intermediate height branches. Um, this one is a nice flowing branch coming out here and then there's one that goes vertical. So I'll prune that off short, I think to right there. And then I've got another one sticking straight up. Let me look at it from the front. Yeah, that's not very flowing. Um, I'm back. I did a bit of pruning and I wasn't recording on the camera because I filled the card. I wish the camera manufacturers would have the camera make a beeping sound when the card's full so you know you're not recording, but uh, I don't know why they don't. It uh, would be a simple software fix. Anyway, let's, um, I've kind of, I've got a lot of my second tier branches pruned now. I think I was maybe at the back here. I'm going to go even lower here. And I wonder if I should even go lower still. I think I will. Yeah, that's good. So that leaves me up to the kind of the crown now. So I was looking at if I'm looking at the front view, I've got a branch that comes up and then it kind of crosses over here. There's another, oh, this is where I was. I have a branch that comes out 90 degrees here. It was pruned off and then a new branch is grown kind of straight up and it's, it's not a great looking branch, any of it. So let me see what it would look like without this whole branch here. It looks much better without it, so I'm going to take that off. So I'll get my get my branch pruners in here. I'm going to just cut it off roughly at first, and then I can get in here a little, cut that part of it off, and then I'll whittle away till I get it almost flush. It's getting there. Just a little bit more if I can get under here. That is getting very close. There. I think that's good. Eh, maybe a little more here. There. Okay, that really opens it up there. I'm wondering, there's a branch out front here. Now that it's kind of opened up, this branch is kind of in the way if you see from the front view. Um, I'm going to take the top part of that off so it'll just be a single branch like that and then I'll reduce this one back to um, to here like that. 
that's much better. So now I'm following this branch up, which has good movement, good taper. I'm cleaning a pruning point there. And I divide from one into three here. So I want to keep my best branches, ones that are flowing outwards. So I think this one sticking straight up can come off like that. And this one kind of crosses back, so I'll want to redirect it in another direction. So maybe if I prune it here, try that, it might get something. There is a branch trying to grow here, and I think there's one on top here and maybe one out front. So we'll see what happens in that area. I'll just clean up this pruning point. And um, so I want to reduce th this branch comes from back here and kind of winds around I want to reduce the height of that so I'll reduce it to here for now and this one back to here it's still quite cluttered in there not really good I, I wonder if I should remove that vertical one. I think so. I'm going to remove that vertical one. And there is a branch that will develop here. So, And then this one kind of sticks up a little high. There's a branch trying to grow here, so I'll prune it back to here. Like that. That's got the height of that in check. Now there's a branch here and it comes from way back here and kind of winds its way through here and kind of over top of this section. So I think I can do something better there. I'll certainly reduce the height of it to here. And that's not bad. I've kind of got this congested area and these branches kind of come together in that area. Kind of echoes each other. It looks looks pretty good actually. I don't mind that. So now I've got some branches back here and then the main trunk line or main tree. So this branch kind of crosses in. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to come in here. Actually, it'll come in from the top, and yeah, I will come here. Cut it like that. That gets that reduced in height. And then my other one, there's a pruning point I can clean up here. Bit of dead wood there. Another one here. And I've got to reduce the height of that. So I'm looking for a leaf scar that faces the back. It's right here. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's a pretty good height. So now I want to prune up the central tree here. So the central tree is kind of a bit unusual because it has a branch coming straight out towards you, but then it kind of curves around and goes off to the side. So it looks pretty good. It's got a branch here, one here, comes up, divides into two. There's a branch on the inside here, but it's high enough in the crown that that one's okay. So I think I've just got a basically reduce a lot of this back here. It's getting quite tall. So again, I'll look for outward facing leaf scars so I can prune this one off here. Um, this one maybe here to there. This one I think to here. that. This one here. The one at the back. Looking for a leaf scar out the back here. I could go here. That might be too high. I'll look for a leaf scar out this direction. Yeah, right here. 
So I'll prune just above the leaf scar, like that. That gets the height reduced quite a bit. Um, I can prune this off here. This one to here. And again, see how this branch kind of comes up in front of the trunk and winds around? I've got another one here that does almost the same thing, so it kind of echoes that, which again, it looks it looks good. It looks quite natural. It's like a something you don't really expect when you see the tree, but it, it blends in beautifully. I don't want, as I said, I don't want this tree to look like some formula or someone's ideal version, idealized version of a tree. I want it to have some natural character and feeling to it. So uh, let's go up to this branch. I've got definitely a more vertical apex here. I've got a branch growing to the inside which I don't think I want. I'll get rid of that one. Like that. Now when I say I want it to look natural, it doesn't mean that it can just do anything. It's still got to, you know, have design principles behind it and it's got to look beautiful. To make it look like a miniature tree. Okay, so that's kind of cleaned that apex up a bit there. Um, we'll reduce this one back to here. This one back to here. And that one is still kind of a little high. I can't really reduce it much further though. This one I can. Like that. And this one I can. Like that. So I'm coming back here, pruning this one off here. There's a leaf I can take off there. This one to here, this one to here. I've got a vertical section on this branch, and I have a nice flowing branch coming here, another one to the side and one out the bottom, so I don't need this vertical part. I'll get rid of that. I'll get rid of that branch sticking straight up. Clean it up a bit like that, and that is good. I may get rid of this one on the bottom. Actually, I'll do that now. It's kind of strange looking. Like that. I'm getting high here. I'll take this one off here. This one's pretty high. Take that one off. Take this one back. I'm going to take this one back a little further. All right, let's have a look from the front again. It's looking quite good. I still feel this branch is a little high here. I'm going to try and reduce it. So I can definitely reduce this back part to there. And the rest of it, I can reduce. There's a branch trying to form here. There's one coming in a strange direction there. I'll try taking the top off here. Like that. And then I'm going to have to reduce this one a bit. It's a nice branch, it's just a little high. Yeah, I'm wondering could I take that entire branch off? Uh, I don't know, it's it's near the apex. If I took it off, I'd have kind of this horizontal branch going back. Nothing kind of vertical. I want, you know, the branches near the center of the tree going more vertical and then starting to lay down or fan out as they get towards the edges. Uh, branch here I'll move to. Oops, just hitting that moss. 
So I've got to decide what to do. It's just a little high that. I'm going to do a Hail Mary cut right here. It's got that prune back and then I've got to reduce this one back here too. It's just too high so I'll take it off here. And I think this whole back section's a little high here so I'll take this back to here. And there's one coming forward here I can remove. I'm still a little long at the back here. It's not bad though, maybe I'll leave that. So I think the next step, I'm going to step back and have a good look at the tree and see if there's anything that bothers me with the branch structure. I'm looking at the tree from the front now and if I cover my hand up here, you can see that the very edge, the two tips here, oh, left here and the right tip, don't really fit within the umbrella shape. They're a little long, or, you know, if I have it that length, let me see if I can do this here. Maybe it's, you know, needs some filling in here. I think it's quite congested in this area too and also over on this side. Um, I think I could reduce this right hand tip back a bit and possibly the one on the left also. So kind of pruning them back to about there. I think that would look better, so I'll do that. That helped a little bit, but it's still, still quite congested in those areas. I think on, on this side, on the left side, there's a branch that kind of splits like this. There's an upper part and a lower one. I'll take off the upper part. I think that'll clean that area up a bit. So right here, it's gone. So that's definitely an improvement. There's still, maybe if I shorten that one. Yeah, that looks better. It looks a little cleaner. And I've got a bit of variation in the, uh, the length out here. And maybe that upper one could be pruned back also. I'll do that. And I'll get rid of that one pointing up. Nitpicking here, but uh, that looks much, much better. I think there's a branch here I want to prune. Shorten that one a little bit. Okay, let's look at the right-hand side now. So same thing, it's quite cluttered. I think I'll take this upper portion off here. There's a branch right in here that's quite straight. I can take the straight part of it up and have it kind of kink upward a bit, so I'll do that. That looks better. I really like that twisty branch here, but it is getting a little high and a little long. Oh, I'd hate to prune that off, but Maybe if I prune the lower portion of it off, I'll try that. The front view isn't the only view you should look at it from, but it is nice to get a nice front view to the tree. I'm really kind of getting into the final details now. But these are the, you know, the finishing touches. They're important. I think this might, might be it. Let's have a look from some of the other views. I've got quite a pile of branches here and some of them are you know, they're all fairly short, but they've got a bit of movement to them. Some of them would make, you know, quite good cuttings. I've got bonsai jays coming down in two days. So I'm going to save the cuttings. He might want to take some and start a Schifflera forest of his own. All right, let's go in and have a look at the Schifflera from all different angles. So here's kind of the looking down a bit. Yeah, it's looking very interesting. 
I'll spin it around so you can see it from all angles. All right, so this is kind of the front view. We'll go over to the right side. There's the right side view. Needs a little more development at the back here, but it's getting there. Going around to the back view. There's a few roots in here, like there's a big crossing root there that I may take out when I repot it next. Going over to the left side view. Good view here. I like the branches are growing really nicely out this side. And back to the front view. This tree isn't very high. I'll put a tape measure here. From the lip of the pot to the top, it's about, about nine inches tall. That's about 24 inches across. So yeah, a very small compact tree. Here's some shots kind of close up at the trunk. And I hope it gives you the feeling that you're under like a giant banyan tree. We'll come in and have another last look at the branches and the trunks. It's time now for today's update and it's getting close to dark so we'll have to do it fairly quickly before the light goes. So let's spin way around here. Let's look at the Portulacaria Afroforest. As you can see, it's getting quite long and overgrown. So I had some of the trees dying back. So it looks like I've lost some of these perimeter trees. Two trees here. You can see they're just, oh, they're all mushy. They're not coming back. They're dead. The tree back here survived. It's, got a, it's getting new leaves on it. This one's good. This one's good. There's one at the back here. I thought it was going to make it. There's still hope. Has it got a leaf on it? No. I don't know. It's not going to make it. There's one at the back here that's not going to make it. And another one back here. So I still have one, two, three, four, five, six trees. I think there's six. So what I'll have to do, I'll have to rearrange the forest a bit. Not moving trees around, but just adding new cuttings to replace the trees that died. And that, that'll be alright. Um, I've got lots of growth up here to prune back. So I can start some new cuttings there and develop those. And it's nice having the variety of sizes. So, you know, you've got to look on the bright side that I'll have some new cuttings that'll remain quite small for a long time. And they'll contrast with the older trees. For the next update, we'll head into the greenhouse and look at the baobab seedlings. Close the door behind me. And they're over here and they're getting better looking every day. You can see they've all got mature leaves on them. They're starting to thicken up a bit. So that's good. My Brazilian rain tree cuttings are still surviving beside it there in the pot. My newly potted uh, Willow leaf ficus back there is doing quite well. It's got a few yellow leaves on it, but you know, it's just recovering and it'll probably begin growing fairly soon. The jade plant that Scott Winard sent me from Sheffield, England is doing really well. It keeps trying to sprout new growth coming out on the trunk. The top of the tree is greened up, so it looks like it's going to grow. There's some buds forming on it. So it's doing really well. It's recovered nicely from its repotting and its trip overseas. So it's good to see. The variegated Sarissa here is in flower and they're beautiful kind of purplish pink flowers. Yeah, they look really nice. They're much more decorative than my other Sarissa, the African style Sarissa. So yeah, there are lots of flowers in that. It's looking good. My yellow hibiscus is just about in flower. You can see the two buds. I think by tomorrow morning they'll be out in full flower. There's a whole bunch of other flower buds all over the top of it. 
And it's gonna look really good. It's looking really healthy after I got it into the bonsai soil. My pink pixie bougainvillea here. It's got some more flowers forming on it. I've got a cluster here. I've got about three clusters on the top that will be coming out and another one over here. So I think in a week or two, I think it'll look really, really good. My ficus microcarpa that I pruned the top of is getting all kinds of new leaves and it's filling in and becoming quite dense in the canopy again. Looking good. Also my sarissa beside it, where I did all the canopy pruning, creating these clouds of foliage is filling in, getting quite dense also. Yeah, so both those prunings were a good success. My last update for tonight is my saber leaf ficus. It put on a lot of growth this summer. You can see the roots are looking really good down here. Yeah, doing quite well. I should actually one more one more update, and that's my ficus lyrata, or my fiddle leaf ficus. People have been requesting updates on it, so here I go. Back into the greenhouse. And here it is back here. Now, so I've got two sets of growth. I've got down low here, and then if we follow the trunk up, I've got all this new growth up top here. And I'm not sure if I've got branches or not. I think I do. I think I have two branches up top. So looking really healthy, growing really strong. So I can either decide, you know, to develop that bottom branch and create a compact tree or keep the tall part and create a large bonsai. And because it has such large leaves, I'm probably better to create a large bonsai out of it. However, if I prune it off and keep it short, I can always grow it and I'll get, instead of the, you know, the straight trunk, I'll get kind of a twisty trunk with taper and everything. So I'll more than likely be pruning it off to that first branch or maybe just a little higher, one of the two. So that's it. It's doing well, looking healthy and growing. The sun's just setting. If you stay tuned after the video, I'll give you an update on the plant room and my truck. I'll be sure to give an update to this tree when it starts getting the new leaves in. But that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. It's time now for an update to the plant room. I'm making good progress. So I'll show you what I've got done. I'm installing the header joist. That comes vertically above the sill plate here. You've got your header joist and that attaches to your floor joists, which run across the floor in the basement. Everything's tarred up really nicely, so it'll all be waterproof. Especially, I really soaked it into the end grain, so it won't rot away like it did last time. I had three of the original hubcaps for the truck, and I put them on to try them out. So they're painted white and they, uh, the original wheels were painted white also and the bumpers. I, I don't like them white and I've only got three of them. So I went online and I ordered a set of used ones. Um, I was lucky to find them actually, they're hard things to get. So I found someone selling a set of four and I bought them. And it says it'll probably take about a month to get here, but uh, so the original ones are silver and they have like black, the indented uh, pattern in it. Like the center part is black and this is shiny. Uh, I don't know if it's chromed or stainless. And uh, the indentations along here are painted black. So it should match the truck pretty nicely when I get the original hubcaps on it. Because I want this truck to look pretty original when it's all done. So it's definitely a different look. It uh, sure gives it a sort of an old-fashioned look. And right now they look terrible. If I painted them black, they'd probably look all right too. It is the next day on the plant room. And I've got that joist, vertical joist beam in place there. 
it's looking really good. I'm going to add another piece behind here just to catch this main central beam. And I'm going to put a four by four beam across on top of the joist plate here. So what I can do then is then I can cut off the ends of these vertical beams, and get back into the really good wood. So I'll have a, you know, a four by four on top here. So that'll work really well. I've started on the other side now, over here. The wood down here is really good. So I just cut off the piece that was rotted here. And I've got this corner supported by a jack under here. And I'm just drying the wood over there and then I'll treat it with wood preservative. You can see the wood's really good. It's in really good shape. So it was just wet because uh, it rained. So I'm just drying it off. I'll put the wood preservative in there. Finish this corner up, which should go okay. My hibiscus over here has three flowers today. It's been flowering for the whole week, but today it's got three flowers. It's really cool. Check that out. I'll come around here. There it is. So. <laughs> wow, what a show. That's the trunk down there. Yeah, <laughs> just amazing. Beautiful red color too. It fades quickly to orange, like probably by the end of today, it'll be faded to an orange color. But right now, they're a really nice kind of, uh, not a dark red, but a fluorescent red, I guess I'd call it. And you can see there's still one, two, three, Ah, at least three flower buds still to come out. And then that'll be it. Then it'll be back to growing the tree as a bonsai. All right, I'm heading out to get the four by four post. That'll go on top of the uh, joist plate there. All right, so cold start, here we go. I love driving the truck. I'll give you a view of the hubcaps. They uh, they look kind of strange at first, but I'm kind of getting used to them now. Let's get our vents open here and the windows down. And the ones I order will be the silver and black and I laid it out on the computer. I'll show you that. So you can see that it looks much better in the silver and black as opposed to the white. Which means I'm going to have to paint my bumpers silver. I, it, they're the only white thing on the truck so I definitely don't want the white bumpers. And I don't want chrome bumpers either. I thought about it, I thought oh, the chrome might look kind of good up front, but then I thought you know it's not supposed to be a pretty truck. It's supposed to be kind of a work work truck. So yeah, I, I don't think a work truck would have chrome bumpers on it. So yeah, I'll keep it uh, keep them painted. And I think the silver will look quite good. It'll kind of match the brushed uh, brushed aluminum finish on the front end. down for that corner. Gotta let the truck warm up a bit before we uh, give her the gas. Still haven't uh, oiled that clutch linkage yet. Better do that. Yeah, the truck's come in real handy for all doing all this renovations to the plant room. It's been uh, really quite good. I've used it uh, yeah, quite a bit, getting lumber and supplies. And... One of the
the reasons I bought the truck in the first place is we were doing renovations at our other house. We, were, we did all the floors and oh, we did all the plaster in it and yeah, there was a lot of a lot of use for the truck, that's for sure. And then kind of, uh, you know, I used it for collecting leaves in fall, uh, collecting rocks. We, uh, you know, made a pathway out of rocks and trips to the dump and that. And, you know, it got used occasionally and then it kind of dropped off the usage. Unless you're doing renovations, you don't really need a truck. Um, you know, you, you need to have a purpose for a truck to really get your money's worth out of it. So I kind of just let it sit in the backyard until I needed it again. And I thought, you know, the orchard and now the plant room, it's working out pretty good. I'm uh, getting my use out of the truck again. transport trees to bonsai shows eventually too. I might get the capper for the back. Like, uh, that way the wind won't be blowing on them when they're in the back. And I can fit a lot of trees in this truck. Last year at the show I had to bring my car, the Matrix, which was just packed to the brim with trees. And Bonsai Jay, he brought his, he has a Toyota RAV4. It was just filled to the brim with my trees too. So. We used two vehicles to transport the trees and I think, you know, with this truck, I could fit all the trees and all the stands and all kinds of stuff in the truck all at once and drive to the shows that way. So, yeah, I think uh, rather than taking two or three cars, you know, you just take the one big vehicle and should do the job fine. Ah, I really miss all the bonsai shows. And not only the trees, but I miss seeing all the people. I used to go to at least three shows a year, like the Toronto show, actually f four. The Toronto show, the Macedo show, the bonsai at the RGB, the KW Bonsai Show. So that's four shows a year and then the Toronto one has two a year so that's five shows that I used to go to and it was so nice seeing all the people there. I uh, I really enjoy talking to them and talking to them about their trees and their life. And so yeah I really miss all that. It was a uh, one of the good things about going to a show and you know the trees are spectacular too I really enjoy seeing people's new trees and old ones that are refined and coming along and yeah it was really nice so, I guess maybe those days will return again I hope uh, maybe they won't I don't know you know, maybe shows will happen and you're only allowed a certain number of people in at a time and you gotta wear masks and clean your hands and social distance. So, which, you know, most of the shows I go to, that's not a problem. You never get huge crowds in the room. It's only really the Toronto show that's jam-packed, so that it would affect them the most, I think. Don't say at the RGB, that was a pretty busy show too. And, I guess they all, at times, get quite busy. Even our KW show was really busy last year with the new venue, so. Yeah, I guess they can all kind of get busy. Now, I'm hoping I can get this 12-foot-long uh, 4x4. Uh, building supplies are kind of getting hard to get I guess um, because so many people have time off work and they're working from home that they're doing a lot of renovations lately and um, so 
Yeah, everything's in short supply, all the building supplies and all the builders are busy. That's why I'm ending up doing all this work myself. I just can't get anyone to do it. truck there. The camera's going funny again. All right, let's, uh, we're almost there. I've almost talked for the entire trip. <laughs> There's another nice truck. like that. And here we are at Home Hardware. Home of the handyman, they say. I'll go in and uh, try and get our wood. I gotta get wood preservative, wood hardener, I think. I'm gonna use around those beams just to make sure they're super strong. And what else did I need? I think that's about it. Here's a look at the truck with the hubcaps on now. Yeah, it's a different look. I uh, definitely makes it look a little more retro looking. I think it'll look good with the silver. They stick out quite far. I guess they gotta cover those hubs. Yeah. So lumber is in short supply. I had to buy a 16 foot four x four and they only have about, I think he said 13 of them left. And I had to get it cut down so it'll fit in the back of the bed. So I've got a 12 foot section and I guess that's four feet. Yeah. So yeah, strange world, but I got my uh, I got my four by four anyway. My next stop, I gotta get lunch. I've been working all morning and I'm really hungry. And I I don't know. If I stop and make it at home, it'll take probably an hour. So I'm just gonna get a pita. With all fresh veggies. I'll get a nice fruit smoothie to go with it. And that'll keep me energetic for the rest of the day, I hope, fueled up. All right, it's time to head back home now and start work again. It was my missing hubcap. <laughs> Looks kind of strange without it. All right, let's get, uh, let's get on board here. is pretty smooth riding. It uh, has a long wheelbase and it, it rides pretty nice. It kind of bounces you around a lot but that could be a lot to do with my shocks, my, uh, my dampers. I have no idea what shape they're in. I, uh, I don't think I've ever replaced them so they could be quite old. I've had the truck 23 years, so they could be, I don't know, 30 years old, maybe older. So they probably need replacing, I don't know. But... And I think I need to get my universal joints uh, fixed. I think they're worn. I think at a certain speed the drive shaft I think shakes. The whole truck kind of shakes at a certain speed, and I, yeah, I've got to get that looked into. It's not bad, and at a certain speed it goes away, 
it's just at a certain, uh, I don't know, about uh, maybe 60 kilometers per hour, it kind of shakes a bit until you get up to about uh, 65 kilometers per hour. And at first I thought that maybe it's the tires, but uh, the mechanic doesn't think it's the tires. He thinks there's, uh, so it's usually when it shakes like that, there's an issue with the drive shaft. And it's not an issue with the front end because there's no steering wheel shake. If it's like front end bushings and that, uh, you know, making it shake at the front, you, you'll feel it through the steering wheel, it'll vibrate, but uh, no, it's just a general vibration in the truck, so. Quite sure it's a uh, drive shaft issue. Probably just needs some new bearings in it. All right. Ah, nice. All right, back to work. My pre bonsai garden has grown incredibly well this year. You can see how tall all the plants are, or all the trees are. Yeah, they really shot up like rockets. So. Yeah, I've got to get to those. Get them pruned back. So well, that'll be coming up eventually. I am at a, a Automotive again, and we've pulled the drive shaft out of the truck. It uh, seems to be the cause of the vibration problems. So if we look underneath here, there is no drive shaft anymore. Yeah. So I've got the drive shaft loaded up in the car and I'm taking it to London, Ontario. There is a drive shaft, shaft specialist there and they're going to put it on a machine and balance it, check it all out, check the uh, hanger bearing. There it is there. So there's that hanger bearing here and they're going to check, balance the drive shaft, get it vibration free. So I'm off to London now. I've dropped the drive shaft off at London Drive Systems. They're gonna fix it up and I'll pick it up tomorrow. My variegated, uh, what is it called? Uh, Sarissa. I'm already seeing a lot of branches that are growing in towards the, the center of the design. To identify problem areas, I just take the trunk line of each branch or cut. <clears throat> to identify problem areas, I just follow the trunk line up to the branches and you just check out each branch and make sure everything's doing that cut. To prune out the <clears throat> to prune out the problem areas, I just take each trunk line and I follow it up to the branches and you just prune each branch one at a time to get rid of any you know, problem area that cut. To decide what to prune, I, for the next update, we'll go in the greenhouse and we'll look at the bee, the bee, 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 not the bee, the baobabs.